today to us is a parable in the book of Luke about, and it's, to me the focus is going to be, as I've entitled this, faith in an unjust world. How is it that we have faith in an unjust world? And yet we, we read First Peter there where God died, while God is righteous, Jesus is righteous, and he died for the unrighteous. So in Luke chapter 18, Jesus gives a, a parable here to us of the unjust judge. And we encounter, I think, these kind of problems and difficulties in our walk of faith. And uh, here's what we can see, what we can understand about this. And we're going to read verses 1 uh, through 8 of the parable of the unjust judge here. And in in certain cases, it gives the parable of the persistent widow, In the uh, King James, it says the unjust judge. When Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up, he said, a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care about men, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And I will, and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Now, this parable is about having faith in an unjust world. That's what it's about. It's not just about the widow, but it is about the fact that the kind of the world the widow lived in and the difficulties that she faced. It is a parable that we we face the reality of the lack of justice is a major problem. It's a major problem in our world and also in our life. You think about that which is just, that which is right. We also desire in life that which is fair. We're going to hear these things all the time, of that which is fair. We live in a world today where it's an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, and it's a warfare and it's a vengeance, and people want justice to come about. So when we look at that, we have to understand some of the problems and difficulties that this particular peril presents to us. So I've listed here for us, but we'll just briefly take a look at some of the problems that we find in the parable. One is an unjust judge. Now, when when the parable starts off, it talks about there was a judge, but Jesus identifies this judge as being unjust. Now, you may and I may think only in terms of the court system because it says, you know, an unjust judge. We're thinking that he's the one who could bring about um, remuneration or help, assistance for this lady. But I'm going to suggest in our life that we're going to encounter people who are not officially judges who are going to be unjust judges. They're going to be unjust judges, what we're going to feel like are unjust judges. And it's going to create some difficulties for us. Now, the, the problem with this unjust judge, and we have to, we're looking at this not only in terms of the judicial system, but we're looking in terms of people that are unjust judges and the like, ourselves included, because I would venture to say that we have judged people from time to time, or oftentimes, many times, and will do so. But the problem that we also see in this parable with this judge is that he had no fear of God. Now you think, oh, okay, uh, we see a world today where a, a fear of God is, is not there. There are other things that people fear, but they do not necessarily fear God. Uh, so that presents a little bit of a problem. They do, or they don't have a respect for God, uh, even if you look at it from that regard. 
Now, this judge also had no regard for his fellow man. Now, you have to stop and think about this is part of our humanity as well, that we tend to think that we're right and we don't regard other people. And this is a very difficult problem in, for all of us to have to deal with, but when you're a judge and you say, hey, I am the soul, I'm the individual, I, I don't regard anybody else, I have a high self-esteem, I have a high regard for myself, which is a result of not regarding your fellow man. So when you look at your fellow man, who is your fellow man? Well, again, we get divisions in terms of racism and all the things that we have. And then there's a problem because here's a widow with a grievance. She has a, a problem she, that is not get, being rectified in the light, so that's a difficulty. We also find in here the desire on the behalf of the widow, because sometimes when you use just the word widow, that in and of itself may engender entitlement. I'm a widow, therefore I'm entitled. Uh, we, we've got to be careful about that because um, the word that comes up, she is talking about a just judgment, uh, but the word that will come up later in this parable is vengeance. So she has a, a bit of a hatred for her adversary, uh, which could obviously be a problem. So there appears to be a, 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 a desire for vengeance make sure that they get theirs. I know yesterday, for example, the sergeant major that was convicted of the uh, massacre in uh, Afghanistan, the members of the family were very, very disappointed that he didn't get the death sentence. That's what they want in terms of their justice. And of course, we realize in our world today in this uh, regard is that people want an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. So there, there is then, the other thing, there is an adversary. There's not identified, but there is an adversary uh, with this unjust judge, with this widow. Now, on the other hand, now, in defense of the widow, we're just using widow, there was no man to represent her. Now, I don't mean to be just gender biased, but in that particular society, if you're a widow, you didn't get the respect and like. This isn't about, well, a woman can't do anything, but in that particular society, uh, she was looking to the judge. There wasn't a man that could go before her, a lawyer or whatever. She's basically trying to represent herself, and she's not being listened to in, in what she is presenting there. Also, the prob there, there are problems of numerous defeats. Because this woman keeps, this widow keeps coming back and keeps coming back and keeps coming back. And, and the, you know, of course, the judge eventually says that, you know, she's, she's going to wear me out here. So, again, as I mentioned, there's no one hearing her case. Another aspect here is slow justice. It, it appears to be very, very, a very, very slow, slow process here. And then also the parable, as we come toward the end, there appears to be a slowness on God's part. Jesus, as Jesus is telling this story and kind of wrapping it up, there appears to be a slowness on God's part. And then finally, it ends up, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Now, let me give you two different ways of looking at this, because the beginning of this verse, we get Luke's, uh, version of what he thinks that Jesus is saying as he understood. So what we read here in verse 1 then Jesus told his disciples a parable now and so Luke these are not the words of Jesus but these are the words of Luke who says the reason to show them that they should always pray and not give up. So those, these are the, the, the directives that Luke gives to the readers of, this, of, of his letter that th this is the, what you need to be doing. You should pray and you should not give up. Feeling the blues today or tired of life already? Do you have questions about life or need spiritual advice? 
The Worldwide Church of God is located in Fairfield, Santa Rosa, and Modesto, California. We welcome everyone to attend our worship services with us every week at the times listed on your screen.